Integration is potentially the most important component of the psychedelic journey, and I think it's long overdue that we have a conversation about it. You guys know I run into issues of demonetization here on this channel, and this is something that I talk openly about. Well, this commenter, we'll call him Bill, left me a suggestion, and he said, you should upload your videos to blank instead. YouTube sucks. And I'm saying blank because if I were to say the name of the actual platform, then I would get demonetized. But at the time though, I legitimately did not know what blank was. So I Googled it and this was the result that I got. Needless to say, First impressions didn't really jive well with me. So I responded to Bill and I said, hey, I just Googled blank and it doesn't fit my personal ideology. And that's all I said. I didn't attack him. I was just like, hey, I don't think it's gonna work for me. And Bill absolutely lost it. He said, thanks for telling me because I don't subscribe to liberals. Google, Google's for liberal propaganda. DuckDuckGo is for real facts. Don't melt your snowflake. Hitler didn't work. I don't know what that means to this day. I still don't know. Clearly the psychedelics didn't work for you. You should seek professional help, inserts five American flags. So um, that was a lot. There's so many layers to this interaction to dissect, but in the interest of time, I'm just gonna tell you that the part of his comment that really jumped out at me was the part where he said, clearly the psychedelics didn't work for you. As in, if they had worked, then you would share my exact worldview, but because you don't, then that means the psychedelics didn't work and you need professional help. I wanna further clarify that my issue with Bill's comment had nothing to do with our apparent differences in political perspectives. I don't expect everyone to agree with me. I love you know, being exposed to differences, to different perspectives, to different walks of life. And the reason that people in, in my world in this world can all coexist is because we have a basic respect for one another. We recognize the dignity in one another. And this was a piece that was missing for me. And it really surprised me because this is a person who I'm assuming has had psychedelic experiences, but yet his takeaway from his psychedelic experiences are not the same as mine. We've talked in this channel about how psychedelics generally, you know, they have a way of enabling you to rise above your ego to see the oneness and love in all that is you know and based on the accounts that I've read from you guys I get the impression that overall psychedelic substances and psychedelic assisted therapy leads to a net positive certainly the studies indicates so. But this does not mean that psychedelic substances are a panacea. It doesn't mean that they solve every single issue and all of the world's problems. So to the extent that I have suggested in the past that psychedelics are everything and a bag of chips, I would like to use this video to clarify my stance. Yes, psychedelic experiences can be revelatory. They can be the catalyst for so much psychological, spiritual, and emotional growth. They can help you become a better husband, wife, neighbor, daughter, friend, what have you. But these substances don't work unless you put in the work. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about just that integration, which is the process of metabolizing what we learn from a psychedelic experience to advance the work of becoming more whole. Integration is potentially the most important component of the psychedelic journey. And I think it's long overdue do that we have a conversation about it and that's what we're going to do on the other side of this transition. I want to share a quote with you by Jack Hornfield in his book, After the Ecstasy, the Laundry. This is the book that I'm currently reading. Integration, like so many things in the beautifully fickle psychedelic space, often laughs in our faces when we try to define it or God forbid, standardize it. There is no step-by-step -step instruction manual that everyone can follow as proper integration varies not only for every individual, but also for every individual psychedelic experience. Due to this, many people fail to integrate the insights on covered during their psychedelic experience, which in turn leads to a waste of most of the experience's value or worse, a destabilization of their inner world. So what I gather from this is that integration is a deeply sacred and individualized process. Not only are we talking about the trip back to ground level after a spiritual experience, but we're also talking about the journey forward into the rest of our lives. If this journey is navigated with care, then it will leave us wiser, more whole, and more capable of reconciling 
reconciling with the nuances and the paradoxes of life. On the flip side, if this journey is not navigated with care, then we run the risk of becoming more destabilized. Psychedelic integration is similar, if not the same, as spiritual integration in that it is a process that can span the course of many years. And like spiritual integration, psychedelic integration is not going to leave you feeling comfortable every step of the way. In fact, anytime we're talking about growing or healing, we are talking about difficult work that can be painful at times, but the result of growth and the result of healing are always well worth it. So it's in that spirit that I'm going to attempt to give you a general structure of what the integration process entails, knowing that this is not a step-by-step -step blueprint. I'm hoping that by sharing these steps with you, you can take them and make them your own. Step number one takes place before your trip even begins. And this step is all about setting yourself up for receiving the most from your trip, but also remembering the most from your trip. This is where it can be helpful to have a trip sitter or a guide. One of the roles of your guide will be to assist you in cultivating the proper mindset ahead of your trip. And the proper mindset is one of intention, asking questions and then letting go, like I mentioned in my previous video. So in addition to helping you prepare, a guide can also help you take notes of the images and the insights that arise during your trip. It's important to have a record of the things that you experience and the things that you learn so that you can revisit them later for integration. Of course, if you don't have of a guide, then you would just take notes by yourself. And you can do this by having a notebook or your phone nearby. The drawback of doing it this way is that taking notes can become distracting. And if you find that this is the case, then don't worry, just sit back, stay immersed in your experience. And you can always jot down your notes during the afterglow portion of your trip, or even immediately following your trip. This is what I've done. And it's worked just fine for me. Just don't wait too long, lest you forget the things that you've experienced. Step number two is is processing the things that you've recorded or the things that you've remembered. And this step begins with you. It begins by giving yourself the space to rest and to take things slow in the days following your trip. Going on a psychedelic journey is an emotionally laborious task, which requires a lot of energy. So don't expect yourself to be back at 100% the next day. Hypothetically, even if you could bounce back at 100% the next day, I would still insist that you take things slow because doing so will create the conditions from which more insights will emerge. These insights could be the North Star for this next leg of your journey. And you know how insights go. They tend to only arise in moments of silence or stillness and not, not so much when we're making noise. So if you weren't already meditating prior to your trip, now would be a good time to establish a regular practice. On top of that, it can also be helpful to have a creative outlet. Maybe that's writing or drawing or painting, photography, yoga, dance, anything to give your experience and expression. During this time of recuperation, some of us may find ourselves asking more questions than we have answers for. And this can feel overwhelming. It can feel like we've opened a Pandora's box of sorts. If this has happened to you, I would recommend that you engage with a trained psychedelic integration coach or a therapist. The Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies has an international directory of psychedelic integration therapists. You can use this directory to locate a qualified therapist in your city who can help you integrate your trip. This can be especially helpful if you have unresolved trauma that has been brought into the limelight via your psychedelic experience. And I want you to know that you don't have to go it alone, nor should you go it alone. Taking those initial steps of seeking professional help could be one of the greatest investments of your life. And taken from me, I have almost four years of regular therapy under my belt, and it is one of the greatest things that I've ever done for myself. Step number three is letting go of the things that no longer serve you. So frequently what happens is that you go into your trip as one person and you leave as another, as a more improved version of yourself. What this means is that you might find that the things that used to work for you in the past no longer work for you anymore. And this is good when we're talking about the release of habits that didn't serve you or relationships that didn't serve you. I'll give you a very simple example of this. Let's say that you used to wrestle with a heavy drinking problem. In the days after your trip, you find yourself no longer having a craving for alcohol. You might even have an aversion to alcohol. And this is great because it seems like you've you finally interrupted your addiction. You've 
beaten your addiction. That's great and all for as long as it lasts. But what happens when you go back to the usual business of your life? What happens when you get exposed to the same triggers and stressors that made reaching for the bottle a source of comfort to begin with? Having your addiction be interrupted by a psychedelic experience is one thing, but ensuring that that addiction stays interrupted, that old habits stay released, is arguably the true challenge of integration. This is where it really takes work. And it's not work that you have to go alone, like I said earlier. This is a nice transition to our next point. Tapping into a support network or a community of people who are on a similar path. Motivation can only get you so far and the rest is the company you keep. Community is so important not only for strengthening your commitment to becoming more whole, but it also fulfills the most basic human needs of being seen and feeling supported. Now before we move on, I want to tell you about integration circles. Integration circles have been popping up all over the world and over the last year they have increasingly moved their meetings online, which is great. An integration circle is a safe and structured space to talk about your psychedelic experiences and hear about those of others. Ultimately, it's about tapping into a supportive community no matter where you are on your spiritual journey. And I'm going to provide more information for you in the description box below. Moving on to step number five, the last step that I have to share with you, and it is adopting positive changes and continuing the practice. Step number three was about releasing old habits or releasing toxic relationships, releasing attitudes and beliefs that did not put you in expansion. Now it's about taking small steps or perhaps big steps in moving your life in the direction that enables you to live in greater alignment with your core values. I can't tell you what to do here as much as I would love to say, well, just go to practice yoga twice a week. This is not, it's not going to be worth anything unless you feel inspired to do so. It has to come from within. In. Instead of just leaving it at that, at that, I want to share with you some common realms of integration to consider, and they are work, education, and cultivation of skills and knowledge, personal health slash growth, which includes physical, emotional, and spiritual health, relationships, friends, family, intimate partners, etc. Lifestyle, which includes the environment in which you live and the hobbies and the leisure activities you engage in. It can be an interesting practice to assign yourself a score out of five on each of these dimensions, with five being I am living according to my values on this dimension, and one being I am not living according to my values on this dimension. See where you are and see where you would like to go. I've borrowed these realms from a basic values bulls from acceptance and commitment therapy, which you can also look into if that's what you're interested in. That brings us to the end of our video. If you enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful, give this video a like, leave a comment for the algorithm. It could be an emoji or something, anything to help get this video out there. I mean, okay, here's a question for you. How do you practice integration? What are some areas of focus for you right now? I will even get this conversation started by leaving my own little tidbit in the comment section below. And other than that, I will see you next week. Bye.